Hey everybody, it's me, Chris. I'm going to do a quick demo of how to auto-generate documents using Visual Basic for Applications and getting data from Excel spreadsheet to a Word document. So before I continue on, let me just go ahead and do a quick demo. And it's done. I know a lot happened really fast, but uh, these two sections here, this fake text and uh, this table here was created dynamically with all of that information gathered from the Excel spreadsheet and the second table was also gathered from the spreadsheet. Um, so if we actually go back and look here, uh, for this to work you're going to need your spreadsheets to be well structured like a database. Uh, basically, I have two sheets here that have the same four columns, first name, last name, email, phone number. It's just a person list, and these names are completely made up. These numbers are completely made up, and emails too. I have this little denoter here, ZZZ in column A. That's very important because that tells the visual basic application script to stop searching this, this sheet, or else it could go on forever to like the 50th thousand uh, row, and you don't want to do that. So... Uh, with that in mind, with this well structured, you're also going to need the Word document that you're writing to to be well structured also. So let me just close this and don't save it. Um, there you go, you open it up. And don't have to worry about this, just a cover page. But this document initially just has these placeholders. If you notice these little brackets, these are actually bookmarks and these are very important because this tells the macro code to actually, or the macro code actually calls the name of this bookmark to actually move the cursor to highlight, select, copy and paste. And I have three different sets of bookmarks here. So if you go to your Word document, insert, bookmark, I have the copy section, uh, basically this over here which I copy. I have the paste section where I tell the cursor to go here to paste that uh, those placeholders and then I have a table section which I don't think I use this bookmark I know I did before but um, in the revised code that I have I don't think I use it anymore but it's very simple to reference um, and yeah as you can see here this document doesn't have any of those tables um, that I just created but I'm going to show you how you do that and to save time I'm not even going to just type out the code I'm gonna just show you it pretty much um, so here we go I have this uh, form ready and what you want to do actually is in your references reference this Microsoft Excel library I think the rest of these are uh, selected by default and if you're using an older version of Windows uh, Microsoft Office I should say don't be alarmed if you only find like a Microsoft Word Excel 12.0 object library is fine but make sure you actually get this uh, Microsoft Excel check because I don't think by default it is uh, so what you want to do is create a class and it's simple all you gotta do is right click on it insert class I already have it created here but basically you just want to give uh, the class these properties F name <laughs> stands for first name. This is last name, email, phone number, and each of these variables are part of an array that's going to be used to store the data from the Excel spreadsheet. So let me just kind of delete that or just leave it there for now. But if you go to the form itself, um, I have these two uh, text boxes. This, oh, this text box here references the Excel spreadsheet which I'm going to use in the code to open up and this one references the Word document that I have with the bookmarks to actually paste the data into the Word document so um, here we go here's the button that creates uh, all the magic and it's going to kind of go over line by line um, here I actually created a variable array person list which is of type person class which we have here which is just contains these four variables and you that's how basically you instantiate it this index here variable is going to be used 
um, in another function which actually increments the size of the array while it reads in the data from the spreadsheet. And these following few lines here open up the Excel spreadsheet. This is the text name of the text box field that contains the spreadsheet. You reference the actual text by adding dot text and this line over here actually tells it to open up sheet 1 because uh, spreadsheets have multiple sheets and if you last used the sheet and you are on you know sheet 20 when you open it up again by default it will automatically be looking at sheet 20 so you always want to make sure you're pointed to the actual sheet that you want um, you know to, to pull the data from if your Excel spreadsheet only has one sheet then this is fine you won't actually have to use this but just so you know sheets when I talk about sheets I'm talking about these tabs over here by default I think everyone comes with three whenever you open it up but maybe some people delete two of their sheets and just have one and these can be renamed you know this doesn't have to be sheet one sheet two sheet three you can actually rename it you can call this um, page two and this also can be renamed to page one and all you would do in this code here is just say instead of sheet one you'll say page one and page two so uh, okay going back to here I call this function called X uh, get Excel data I'm gonna go over it real quick first let me go over this function this is this is basically what reads in the data and puts it into the array that we created here and I pass in the index which is right now negative one it reads all of the data from sheet one and then I tell the worksheet to open up sheet 2, the page 2 basically. I call the function again, pass in both of those parameters, and then I close the Excel worksheet spreadsheet. Here, I do the same thing as above. I actually open up just the Word document. This is the variable of the text box field that, can, that, can, uh, that points to the actual Word document that I'm going to be pasting into. And here's where most of the magic happens where it actually pastes the data into the word document at the end here this I don't even need you just uh, set those initial variables to nothing call the function called end of document and then I unload the actual user form the frame itself so here's where I actually get the data from the Excel spreadsheet I have a temp string uh, by default I set it to just a blank string and I have a while loop where it checks to make sure that this isn't equal to ZZZ. If it equals ZZZ then it will uh, step out of this uh, loop and if you remember here is ZZZ it will read through everything here once it gets to here and sees that it matches ZZZ it steps out of the loop. I'm having the row variable start at 2 and the reason why because I don't want it to start reading at 1 because this is just the column headers and in the code um, I don't want to read this in as part of the uh, array I'm just going to start at row 2 and read all of this down and store it into the actual array so starting at row 2 if it's not ZZZ then I know it's some data that I want to store so if you remember I had the index passed in and it initially was negative 1 I incremented by 1 index 0 um, in computer science, most of these loops, uh, structures, or arrays, um, they all start at index 0 and not at 1. And here's when I actually increment the size of the array. Because I declare the array, but it's, it's, it doesn't have any data. It's not actually instantiated. Here's how you actually create an array of size 1. Um, and the first index is index 0. After you create a, uh, increment the size of the array, you're going to want to new that instance so you can actually access the data variables because if you just do this without actually calling this set method or set um, line of code then when you actually try to use the variables you'll get like a no pointer exception type um, error through Visual Basic so here I basically read in all of the data from the columns if you recall I had A, B, C, D, A was first name in the spreadsheet, B was last name, C was email, and D was, um, what do we call it, a phone number. And here, this is the syntax to actually tell the cursor to highlight that cell. It basically says, go to and select uh, column A at row, 
which is 2. So I'm telling it, here's column A, row 2, grab that, get that data, put it into first name. And you would do that by uh, having the first name equal active cell text because this puts the actual cursor on that cell block and there. You would do the same thing for the other three variables. You would tell it to reference the correct column and you would do that for the whole time. And then here I basically increment the row. So instead of being at row two, now it's going to go to row three. And it's going to do the same thing over and over again until temp string equals ZZZ. And it will get there. So here's just a, I won't go over that right now. Just to save time, same with this one, I won't go over that. I don't think I use it in actual code. Here's where you actually paste the data into the Word document. Um, so if you remember, there's two pages of data. I read it into the same array, so the array is going to have 40 indexes. So just to save some time, because I'm coming close to the 15 minute mark, I have some variables here declared. Um, I want to create two sections in the Word document with two different tables. So this middle list basically tells me later on, um, okay, first table is going to be the first 20, the second table is going to be the second, you know, set of 20 names in the 40 array, 40 index array. So you will do this for loop. It tells you to go to the bookmark copy section. It copies it. Then it tells you to go to the paste section. I move the cursor up, I type enter twice, and then I actually paste the data. So if you want to see that real quick, here's the copy section between these two brackets. Here's the paste data. It moves the cursor here, and then enters twice, and then pastes. Here, I find the placeholder text that actually where I want to copy and paste the table. Here's the section table. So I'm going to reference that section and then find it and then delete it. And then here's where I start the actual code to create tables. So I go here, I create a table initially of one row and four columns. I declare the size of the column width with these four lines here. I bold the background, I color the background color gray, and then the, at the first row, I actually do the column headers. So continuing on, here's the for loop that actually goes through the array that I actually gathered the data from, and then at the actual table row and cell, I actually assign it the variable array, first name, last name, email, phone number that I got from the Excel spreadsheet. Here's where I create the caption text for the table, and these last 30 lines here that you see basically just creates the lines uh, for each cell block. And that's that. So, if you want, let me go ahead and redo this. I'm going to run it again. And let me actually minimize this so you can see kind of more in the background what's going on. Oh, shoot. Let me do that one more time. Small little hiccup, but no worries. Do that again. Get any Excel data. Going through all of the cells. Switched over to page two there, sheet two. It finished. It was doing it in the background. There's the table for the second table. Here's the first table. And uh, my time is up, guys.
hope it was uh, educational.